Oh, hi there, and welcome to Knockout City. In case you didn't notice, we love dodgeball here. Why I can't even walk to the corner store or even sit quietly on the roof of my apartment building without a match breaking out. What's that you say? You want to play but you keep getting creamed? Well, don't you worry. Today, with the help of the Nerd Life crew, I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts of the game. That's right, our players have put together some highlights, advanced moves, and a few strategies to help you take your game to the next level. Isn't that keen? So when the balls start flying, you'll be ready to pound the other team into the ground. What do you say, little buddy? Are you ready to learn how we do things in Knockout City? Oh, that's great. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is Soda Pop Rock Jones. I'm the editor for Nerd Life. I put this video together because I saw some people having some trouble grasping the finer aspects of this game. So let's get into it so you can get back out there and start bullying people. Passing is a crucial part of the game, as it can make or break a play. A good pass requires awareness and game sense. For instance, if a teammate is facing off against another player and they're trying to focus on catching the ball, a pass can be jarring. And sometimes waiting for the right moment can turn a loss into a win. Even if you're playing with randoms, you should make sure the passing is part of your game. When you pick up the ball, instead of asking whose face this is going to go into, make sure you ask yourself instead, how is this best to use? And I promise, you'll start winning more games. There are three shots in the game with the standard balls. The straight shot, the lob, and the curve ball, but you can learn all of those in the tutorial. When to use each shot can vary by situation, so throwing a curve ball every time just won't cut it. Mastering and mixing up those shots will keep your opponents on their toes, and that's exactly where you want them. This next shot is something that you're going to want to add into your repertoire, especially for those ranked matches. We call it the Scorpion Shot, and it was actually developed by Stevie of Nerd Life. What you want to do is target the enemy, jump into the air, do a frontward lob spin, and release the ball to hit the enemy directly in the back. Now, even if they dash away, this ball should still hit. Faking is about distance and timing. If you're too far away, the opponent probably isn't going to fall for it, or might have enough time to reload their catch animation. Where if you're up close, there's a much higher chance of them falling for your fake outs. Also, don't be afraid to get creative. A spin if done right works just as well as the fake animation, and you can link them together to really fool your opponent. Some people would argue that catching is more important than shooting. Both of course are essential to winning, but if the enemy team can't land a hit, it will shake their confidence. But what do you do after a catch? Most of you would probably just throw it back at them, and go back and forth until one of you lands a hit. But, a better strategy may be to take that ball and retreat, or pass it over to a teammate. It's all about the situational awareness. If you're having trouble with your catches, what I would do is grab a couple of friends and go do a 2v1. You'll probably end up losing, however, you'll get a lot of experience really quick and you'll be ready when match time comes. Oh, and pro tip, listen for the sound of the ball and watch for the trail that falls behind it. If you're seeing those in the early stages, it makes it much easier to catch the ball. The reason I put together catching and dashing is because I notice that people confuse when they're supposed to use either one. It becomes kind of apparent whenever I watch somebody try and catch two balls at once, when clearly the only thing they can do is dash forward to try and knock them both out of the way. Oh, and another thing about dashing. If the enemy has a ball and you decide to dash forward to try and grab a ball that's in front of you, you're giving them an opportunity to hit you when you're vulnerable. So be careful for that. Sometimes it's just better to wait, catch the ball, throw it, dash forward, grab the next ball, and then throw the second one so you force the enemy to juggle. I personally believe that this game has three roles that each person has to fill at various times throughout the round. Uh, that is a bully, a support, and a flank. And I'll go into each one of those here in just one second. Let's talk about the bully. Now the bully is the type of player who's going to run up and 
get up in your face. They're going to do a lot of fakes. They're going to do a lot of tackles. They're going to want to push you around and draw attention onto themselves. So that way, the support and the flanker can get into position to corner you and take out your team. Now the flank, they need to run around and gather up a ball and try and get behind the enemies. That way, while the bully is in there drawing attention, they can get easy shots to the back. All the while waiting for the support to pass them a ball. So that way, in case attention gets drawn back onto them, they then have the option to trade places with the bully. The support's role is very simple. They're there to back the play and double up where the enemy is being hurt. If they're falling for a lot of the close attacks, make sure to get in close and do a lot of pass plays to confuse them. If they're falling for the flanks tactics, be sure to pass back to the flank and the flank can pass back to you in case the enemy turns around. It gives you a lot of options. By being a good support, you should be there to help out both your team members achieve success and spot anything that they may not be able to see because they're trying to do their own jobs in case somebody is, for instance, coming up behind your flank. Punishment is an effective and simple tool. Basically, if the enemy keeps lobbing themselves over at you over and over again, or somebody keeps dashing at you to try and knock you back, what you want to do is anticipate them doing that action and wait for it. Get yourself set up in a place where you know you'll be safe, but if they lob up somebody, you'll have the perfect angle to fire off a shot when they come out of it, and they'll have that moment of vulnerability. Or, if somebody keeps dashing at you, get a good lock on them, jump up into the air, do a simple lob shot, and you should be able to pound them into the ground. They won't be expecting it. And if they dash right beforehand, oh, they're going to have that same vulnerable spot. And that's exactly how you stop that kind of behavior. The reason I wanted to talk about the environment of this game is because already I've seen a lot of creative uses for the terrain, from knocking yourself around with the wrecking ball to avoid an ult, to rolling underneath a car just when the ball is about to take you out. This game is going to get very interesting in the coming months, and feel free to get out there and get creative and see what you can make happen. Who knows, you might be building the new meta. Take a look at some gameplay footage and see if we can find the things that we've discussed in the actual plays that are working on the field. This will probably be you when you first start matches. A little unsure of where to go, sticking with your teammate, hopefully passing the ball around. But watch, this is how you can tell that you and your team are actually gaining synergy. Whenever you and them get together to take down multiple opponents at once. Look as they're focusing, choosing targets, passing the ball back and forth to get the charge and get the KO. In this clip, we're actually going to watch as Stevie switches from a bully to a support to a flank. He goes around, becoming what he needs and adapting to the game as it happens. And that's exactly what you need to do. Here we see Silipones rushing in and adding pressure onto the enemy team, forcing them to make mistakes, while his teammates back him up, applying to that pressure until the enemy eventually falls apart. Finally, let's watch as Pixel Fox rushes in to support her team, but then 
in the right moment switches to a bully to get the final kill shot. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you know, give us some of your own tips and let us know what you're doing out there too, and who improved the game, and have a good time. Thank you very much.